the 55th annual ISNA convention. In God we trust. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidin Mursaleen. Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam tasliman kathira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. May Allah reward all of you taking time out from your busy schedules, traveling from far and wide to attend ISNA in Houston. In God we trust. When we say in God we trust, we aren't saying anything new. We're reminding ourselves that this work is the work that we have inherited from the prophets. When Noah, uh, Nuh salam, Noah, the prophet Noah, priest be upon him, was commanded to build an ark and to collect the animals. And when the waters started to rise, he trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he trusted in Almighty God that his actions and everything happening around him, no matter how uh, imposing the situation was, that it was part of the divine plan. When Ibrahim alayhi salam, Abraham, peace be upon him, left his family in that barren valley in the Arabian Peninsula, he left them there trusting in God, placing his trust in God, understanding that his actions were part of a divine plan and that the, his actions would lead to great good. And indeed, his action led to great good, for out of that action would eventually rise our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When Musa, Moses, alayhi salam, when he was being, when his mother, even before him, when his mother placed that basket in the Nile River and left her baby, she didn't leave her baby to just drift down the river aimlessly, not knowing, not knowing if the baby would survive. She left her baby in the care of God. She placed her trust and Almighty God, and out of that action, the great tyranny of Fir'aun was undermined and brought to an end. When Moses was fleeing from the army of Pharaoh, and when he went into the sea and struck the sea, he placed his trust in God, understanding that everything that was happening was happening according to a divine plan. When Mary, found herself with child, not being touched by any man. She understood that what was happening to her was part of a divine plan, the divine plan. She trusted in God that good would come out of what was happening to her, no matter how inexplicable the situation was. When our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in the desert and his heart was extracted from his breast and cleansed. At that young age, he didn't panic because instinctively, if not intellectually, he knew that a divine plan was unfolding. When the angel came to him in the cave and he was disturbed and he was comforted by a, a loving, compassionate, wise wife, Khadija, he came to understand that everything happening to him, the consultation of uh, Waraka, it was part of a divine plan. When the Prophet ﷺ was encountering difficulties, when he was boycotted and blockaded by his own people, when he was chased out of Ta'if, when he was spat on and stoned and insulted by the children and imbeciles, of the city, he did not panic, he did not despair because he understood 
It was all part of a divine plan. And he beseeched his Lord, are you angry with me? If you're not angry with me, I don't care about this, which is transpiring because he understood it was part of the, a divine plan and he trusted, he placed it, his trust in Almighty God. So brothers and sisters, as the events of our time unfold, no matter how imposing, no matter how intimidating, and, and sometimes, in some instances, no matter how unsettling those events may be, understand that they are part of a divine plan. They are part of divine plan, and it is our responsibility to trust in God, to trust in God and to understand that a divine plan is unfolding. And our part in that plan is to be steadfast. Our part in that plan is to continue to be proud, to be strong, to hold our heads high, to understand that we are the heirs of a prophetic mission. And like the prophets, we must place our trust in God and understand a divine plan is unfolding. And when we talk about that, we talk about our mission, we talk about the mission of the prophets, First and foremost, it's not a political mission, it's not an economic mission, it's not a social mission. First and foremost, it is a moral mission. And if ever there was a time when our society, our country, even more so when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. proclaimed that change in this country would require a revolution of values, if ever there was a time when a revolution of values was needed, the time is now. As we see the incivility, as we see the crudeness, as we see the coarseness in our public discourse, as we see the, the resurgent racism that's gripping our society, as we see the, the gaping gaps between the wealthy few and the, the, the multiplying multitudes of the poor, if ever there was a time for a revolution of values, a revolution of mor morality, an ethical revolution, the time is now. And if ever there were people who dedicated themselves to the divine, to, to the, the air, the mission of the prophets, those people are us, brothers and sisters. So we have a responsibility to place our trust in God and not to despair. Understanding that despair is not a quality of God-fearing people. It is not a quality of believing people. Despair, desperation, panic cannot be the way of our people because it is not the way of a believing people. When, the pe when uh, Yaakov instructed his sons to return to Egypt and to search for their brothers, at the end of his instructions, he said to them, Don't despair of the mercy of God. Don't despair of relief from God because no one despairs of relief from God. No one despairs of mercy from God except a disbelieving people. And they were a believing people. And we are a believing people. And as such, we cannot despair of God's mercy. We cannot despair of the mercy of God. Brothers and sisters, as we go forward during this critical time we find ourselves in. But as we say, trust, place our trust in God. What does that mean? For many people, God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty God, becomes an abstraction. It becomes something we might view as an intellectual construct, but it's not something that becomes internalized in the depths of the souls and the hearts of many people. How do we make it real, brothers and sisters? One way that we make it real is by reflecting on the names and attributes of Almighty God. And when we read amongst the names of God, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, the merciful, then we understand that God is merciful to us despite the challenges, despite the struggles, despite the difficulties, hardships, or obstacles we might 
finding our, in our way, if we look deeply at our situation, we can see in real, tangible, palpable ways the mercy of God manifesting itself in our lives. And we realize the power and the truth of the statement of Almighty God, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa kana bil mu'minin rahima. Wa kana bil mu'minin rahima. That he is merciful to the believers. He is Rahman, he is Rahim. And one way to make that, another way to make that real is not just reflecting on the reality as it pertains to our Lord, but to reflect that reality ourselves to the extent human poss humanly possible. So as we see people struggling, people challenged by the ravages of our time, then it is our responsibility to extend mercy to them. It is our responsibility to be individuals whose actions are qualified by mercy and to become a community that coalesces around the value of mercy, brothers and sisters. He is Rahman, he is Rahim, he is Malik. He is the sovereign. He is the sovereign. And we, we are not the sovereign. We are not the owner of the heavens and the earth. But we have a responsibility. We are placed in situations which demand us to respond and to carry ourselves with the dignity of a king. Each and every one of us must possess the dignity of a king. And a king is a noble person. We must have nobility. We must hold our heads high. We cannot hold, hang our heads in sadness and despair overwhelmed by the tsunami of negativity that sometimes washes over our community. We must hold our heads high. We must be malik in that sense. We must be in that sense. We must be dignified people. He's Al-Quddus. He is the sacred one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have no human share of that sanctity. But we must honor and respect the sanctity of God. We must magnify the sanctity of God. We must commit ourselves to upholding in human societies as many people move away from God, finding ourselves the people that extol and magnify and honor the sanctity of God. Al-Quddus, Al-Mu'min, he is the one that extends safety and security to others. Aman, al-mu'min, the one who extends that amana, that aman. And we must be al-mu'min. We must be individuals that do not harm people. As our Prophet reminds us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-mu'minu man amina nasu bawa'iqa. The mu'min, the believer is one, people are safe from any, any evil from that person. We must be individuals in a community that not only through our speech, not only through our deeds, but through our very state of being exude peace and security, safety and security to people. We must struggle because people are being increasingly rendered unsafe. We must be the people, we must be the community that let people know it is possible to have an environment where people can feel safe and secure in their persons. They can feel safe and secure in their possessions. And they can feel safe and secure in their honor. And that as Muslims, we will not violate any of those in any of our fellow citizens, not just the citizens of our city, or the citizens of our state, or the citizens of this nation, the, citizen of the, the citizens of this global community we find ourselves situated in. He is As-Salam. He is the one free from defects and imperfections. As-Salam. And we will always be defective as long as we're in this world. When we're in Jannah, Dar as Salam, that's the abode of imperfection. The defects that we exhibit in this world won't exist there. 
In this world, we get sick, and there there'll be there there'll be no disease. In this world, we die. There there will be no death. In this world, we eat and we pass waste. There we won't pass waste. There, that's the bold of safe of where there will be no defects and no imperfections. Our Lord is a salam. He's free from defects and imperfections. We should be the ambassadors of salam. And when we say assalamu alaikum, saying to our fellow Muslims first of all, we're at a time when we see Muslims destroying the lives and homes and nations of their fellow Muslim. The bombs might be purchased from America, but the pilots dropping the bomb in far too many instances are Muslims. The missiles might be purchased from America, but in far too many instances, the one pushing the button to launch the missile is a Muslim. The ships might be purchased from America, but in far too many instances, the one navigating the ships to, inter to institute the boycotts and the black blockades that result in entire nations starving or suffering from diseases ravaged by cholera, as we see in Yemen, in far too many instances, the pilots are Muslim. We have to say no. We are the ambassadors of Salam, the ambassadors, the people who won't render people defective, the people who won't impose diseases and hardship, death and destruction on other human beings, the people of Salam. That's who we must be, brothers and sisters. That is our calling, and that is how we internalize the meaning of the names and attributes of Allah, and that's how Allah Ta'ala becomes more than an abstraction with us, more than an intellectual construct with us, but a living God, a God who's living, and a God whose presence in our lives influences our actions, influences our decisions, influences how we interact with our fellow human beings, with our fellow denizens of this planet, humans, plants, animals, everyone, the seas, the wind, the air, the sky. This is who we are. This is who we must be, brothers and sisters. al mutakabbir al mutakabbir the one who who arrogates power to himself. This is our Lord. And many people say, how could a human being be mutakabbir if they are indeed godly people? Al-Izbin Abdus Salam in his book, Shajaratul Ma'arif Wal Ahwal, he asked that question rhetorically. And he says, it appears there's no human embodiment of mutakabbir, but in reality there is he is the person that arrogates him or herself above petty, vile, unbecoming behavior. Yeah, we're too good for that. You know, the young people, they might be hanging out and one insults the other. He says, you know, your head is so big it makes the Goodyear blimp jealous. And the other starts to think, you know, man, how could I top that? Then he realizes, I'm better than that. This is a takabur. I'm above that. I don't need to respond to that. You know what? The person that said, my head's so big, it makes the good year glimp. But tell that person I love them for the sake of Allah. Tell them I look forward to going somewhere to sit down to have a cup of tea and discuss the issues of the day, see how they're doing, catch up with them. Do that for me. That's mutakabbir. Brothers and sisters, this is who we are. This is who we are. We should strive to be a people who to the extent humanly possible reflect the names and the attributes of Almighty God. And when we can do that, that's when it will be very easy to place our trust in God because God will be living. al hay, al hay, the living. And living will impact our lives, impact our decisions, impact who we are, how we carry ourselves, how we conduct ourselves, how we, how we, what we represent to our nation at this critical time in its position in its history rather. Brothers and sisters, in conclusion, let me say this. Trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is, the, is a good orchestrator of history. 
Despite the challenges, despite the hardships and difficulties, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still the master of this ship. He is still the master of our fate, not ourselves, not our government, not this or that political party, not this or that politician. Those are all means that Almighty God uses to implement His will and His creation as He desires. And we have to understand that. And understanding that, we understand that this is just a test and a trial decreed by God, our Almighty God. How will we respond? We respond with the dignity of kings. We respond with the mercy, the mercy of merciful people. We respond with the responsibilities to others that's embodied in our greeting, As-salamu alaykum, peace be upon you, peace be upon you, peace be upon you. I will not render you defective. I will not lessen your dignity. I will not usurp your wealth. I will not encroach on your property. I will not violate your honor. I will not do anything to lessen you in any way, shape, or form whatsoever. Peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. Peace be upon you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. the 55th annual ISNA convention. In God we trust. <laughs>